Hello everyone and welcome to another um, Creative Motion video. In this video we'll be taking a look at the third um, node in the series, which is the Collision Point node. Um, so just let me bring up the Expresso window. Um, and I've already kind of set up a scene here just so we don't waste too much time. But um, essentially all I did was pull out the Collision node, drop it into the express, uh, Expresso window. Um, pull in both of these spheres, link them through the object uh, parameters on both, um, and then all I've done is I've just pulled out all these additional um, points here, all these additional features. Okay, so we've got features like the tolerance, um, the collision, and um, point polygon index features, um, and I'll just kind of briefly go over those and um, explain how they work. So first up, let's just break this uh, and we'll just show the simplest feature, which is collision. And that works as um, like a Boolean value. So you can see as I'm moving this out and in, it's um, it's changing between zero and one. So one for a collision, zero, if not. So it's like, it's just an on off switch basically. Um, it works in that way. So, you know, that's the, the easiest way to use this. Um, so you can trigger animations or whatever you want to kind of trigger based on that Boolean value um, and based on the collision. Um, if we click on the node um, and go to, say, this drop down here, we've got all these different options. Now we've got um, bounded box, sphere, object, um, distance and tolerance and distance tolerance kind of works in a similar way. So bounding box essentially will create a very simple basic box um, and your collision is working off of this shape. Okay. Um, the next mode is spherical um, which will give you kind of maybe a little bit more of an accurate represent representation of um, where your collision points are. Um, uh, but the most accurate way is to base this off the polygons of the object. So say your shape's like this, and the most accurate way is obviously to collide with the actual mesh. Um, but there, there is a trade-off, so with this method, it's the, it will, you know, can kind of be the most expensive in terms of um, processing um, as opposed to the box, but it's the most accurate method. So coming back to the node again, um, if we say if we choose the object mode on this, we've got some additional features. Now I'll just break the result mode there, and I'll just pull that into the polygon index. Um, and what that should do is now when we collide with these points, it's given a number. And see, it might and it might possibly change if we move it over. Um, 26 yeah so it's, it's giving us different numbers every time um, and essentially what that is that's the first um, it's the index point of the first polygon that collides with the object and that's basing it off, off of this object here so off of sphere 1 so obviously object 1 is linked to polygon index 1 um, uh, and that can that can be handy if you want to kind of pinpoint a particular polygon um, on this. We can also use selection tags if you want to kind of collide to certain areas of the mesh um, and isolate other areas as well. So you know you can. It's quite, I guess it's quite obvious the the, the functionality and the, and the the reasons why you might want to use this node. Um, it's essentially just you know triggering whatever you want to trigger based on collisions of particular objects. Um, and you've got, you know, all these extra kind of advanced features here built in. So going back, actually going back to referencing um, a particular point. Now we can see um, this is kicking out 65. So this is telling us index, the po polygon index 65 of this object is colliding it, or is the first point to collide on this object. Um, and if you want to find this, you can click on the object, go to the um, structure manager, change mode to polygons, and then if we go down, 
and you go to 65 you can kind of you can reference here um, you know your, your polygons or whether it's points that are colliding you can reference those um, so use the structure manager um, with Expresso to kind of to work out and figure out how your calculations are working okay so I think that's enough on this node for now um, so we'll just jump over and we'll take a look at how we can do um, a similar kind of um, thing with Python um, but what we'll do is we'll just base it off of using the feature of just a collision with it being on or off um, just off of like a boolean value so at a certain point it'll collide trigger something um, and then when the objects move away it switches back off again so let's just go straight into this so I've got this scene set up here and um, we'll just quickly take a look at the code and I'll quickly just talk over how this works and we have um, two nulls in the scene and I've just declared variables for each null um, so we have the tag on a null called collision and on this um, we have user data and we have these two link slots so we can pull in two different objects now you can customize this for how many objects you need but we're just going to base this off two objects um, and it's going to be based off of distance so we're going to be calculating distance and then working out so we've got um, both objects pulled in to these values um, and then essentially what's going to happen is we're going to calculate the vector point so the offset position point of both objects subtract them um, and then that gives us the distance and then we're saying here if the distance is less than 10 do this if it's not less than 10 do that okay so uh, and this and this value here is 30 and 10 so that's two different values for the radius of this so if I click this pull this in and out you can see it's kind of triggering this just kind of state two different states based on the distance um, and it's doing it based on obviously all the different axes so the way any a way to understand this is if we have say initially we're going to retrieve the, um, the matrix um, of both of these um, and the matrix consists of um, four different vectors so we've got a vector for each one of the um, axes so you know, we've got a vector for this vector for this vector for this um, the size of these vectors do, um, can determine the scale um, and the fourth vector is the offset and the offset is essentially the position and what we can do is just say we have um, two different objects so we have the offset vector for object 1 um, and we have the object vector for object 2 if we subtract um, this this off offset vector by this offset vector we get this vector here now, the, and so this vector is obviously the distance um, and the calculations will still be a series of three different numbers because of your, uh, the vectors consists of three numbers but we can then convert that vector and combine all those numbers into a single value um, so we, and then we can use that single value there to drive um, the this if statement so if this value that single value here so if this value here is less than 10 or is greater than 10 then we change the radius of this okay so we'll just get rid of the code and we'll just start typing this out right so the first thing I've done is on here I've just added user data so you can see it's actually on the tag so manage user, user data um, and you can see we've got two different slots here and they're both links so once I've put, put those on 
um, I've just pulled both of the nulls into the links slots uh, and then we can access those um, by just declaring um, okay so what we need to do now is declare two different variables so let's call one obj01 um, and then do op and we just want to pull in the user data from this so user data to this one I'll just copy this actually just call this um, user, change this to user data 2 um, change this variable to object 2 then just put a space in there to separate these out so we've determined um, variables for both of the different user data slots the two the, both of the links so both objects are linked in and then they're taken into these variables here and placed in here um, and what we want to do is we need to get the um, matrix out of these so let's just um, type in maybe j01 um, dot get M G um, and so we'll just I'll just print this for now and you can see it's getting the yeah you know, let's put brackets in there you go we've got the matrix so we're printing the entire matrix for object one. Um, and it's giving us all this information that the only thing that we need is the offset so it's this um, value here yeah so all we need is this okay um, so now that we know that we can get the offset by just typing in dot off um, so we execute that again is set is just pulling out the vector there so it's just the offset vector um, and then if you put in dot um, actually just wrap this in brackets get length so get what that dot get length thing's doing is combining all three um, values in the vector to one single value um, and we need that to kind of because we're just going to base the um, the logic or the the um, whether the determined distance is say higher than 30 or less than 30 and then it triggers something in the code um, so that's really good and that's that's all we need at this point but we need to calculate both of these um, we need to calculate both of these um, to by subtracting one from the other so let's just do that now we can just put in so we've got OJ get a matrix from uh, a matrix offset from that vector um, and we'll just do OJ02 dot get mg so we're getting the matrix from the vector object with the offset and we'll just execute that so object 1, object 2 so you can see as I'm moving these um, closer and together and further away, you can see that value increasing and decreasing. So that's that distance value um, that we've obtained now, and it works obviously in every axis, no matter where this is placed. So it's working out the distance between both of these. Now with this, we can calculate um, or kind of create some conditions um, to tell this tell python what to do so instead of printing this value what we're going to do is create a in this statement so 
I'll just um, create a new variable and just call this um, dist for distance. So we put that value in into that um, variable there. So we've got that saved. And now what we can do is we can type in um, if dist is say um, less less than I don't know maybe twenty. Then <clears throat> so obviously let's make sure the colon's on the end. And it's indented as well. Um, and then, so if distance is less than 20, then we can um, just say OBJ and then click, select the object. And then we want to pull in the radius onto this. So we'll just make the radius equal to, I don't know, let's just make it 50 for now. Um, and then we'll do if distance is less than, less than um, 20. Oh, sorry. If if um, distance is greater than uh, twenty, we will set this <coughs> to a different value. So we'll set this to like I don't know. We'll set it to like ten or something. Sorry, it needs to be obj zero one. There you go. So you, we're kind of triggering this um, distance now. Um, we've done it the other way around because the values are swapped and um, the variables are swapped, but you get the idea of how this works. Um, and it works in every dis every um, axis there. Um, and we can also do, we can just print out that value as well. So if we do print. Um, that you can see it updating between 10 and 50 and this is so this is just a really really simple way to kind of collide two different objects um, and we're not doing any kind of you know polygonal coll collision detection um, but you know just just keep this short and uh, keep the show code short and um, keep it fairly simple then that's why I decide to go down this route and just use it this way so I hope you found this useful, um, thanks for watching the video and I will see you on the next one.